But if they're ignoring you, they might love doing that too. All right, it is time to have church, amen. It's time to worship the Lord. It's, it's time to lift up to him the sacrifice of praise that he is so wonderfully worthy of this evening. Why don't we stand to our feet? Why don't we lift up that sacrifice of praise to him tonight? Worship the Lord tonight in truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship him tonight for he is worthy to receive all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. Loving God, we worship you, we magnify you. We thank you for this wonderful and glorious opportunity. God, that you have given to us to be in your house and in your presence tonight. God, we look to you to have your way in this service in our hearts and lives. God, we look to you to move by the Spirit of God, accomplish your will, challenge us afresh in every way, God, to draw closer to you. God will give you all the glory. We do give you all the glory and all of the honor in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a round of applause as our brother prepares to lead us in song tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord in song. Page 472. The old account was settled. All right. Was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was sitting. For sins yet unforgiven, my name was at the top, and many things below. I went unto the keeper and said, Oh, long ago, long ago, down on my knees, long ago, I settled it all. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. The old account was large and growing every day, for I was always sinning. I never tried to pay, but when I looked ahead and saw this pain and woe, I said that I would settle. I settled long ago, long ago, down on my knees, long ago, I settled it all. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, hallelujah, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, 
When in that happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll sing redemption story. I'm present for his love. I'll not forget that book with pages white as snow because I came and settled and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, O oh, sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sins, for thus he hath commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, up there you'll not regret it. You settled long ago, long ago, down on my knees, long ago, I settled it all. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled. Verse 3, when in that happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll sing redemption story and praise him for his love. I'll not forget that book with pages white as snow because I came and settled and settled long ago, long ago, down on my knees, long ago, I settled it all. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. For he washed my sins away when the old account was settled. Long ago, hallelujah, and my record's clear today. For he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. Amen. Let's pray the Lord. Thank you, God. For that account being settled, Lord, long ago. And God, thank you, God, that you made it possible, God, through the power of your blood, Lord, to have our sins forgiven, God, through what, what you did on the cross. God, have your way, Lord, this evening, God. If there be anybody who does not know how to have that account so they can settle it tonight, God, have your way, Lord, tonight. Move in your spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's go to page 462, Springs of Living Water. Amen. All right, here we go. And shame, and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ, one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, a wonderful and bountiful supply. How sweet the living water from the hills of God. It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Hallelujah. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I. My soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. Wonderful and bountiful supply. Oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free, where thirsty spirits can be satisfied. Let's sing it tonight. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, all is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, a wonderful and bountiful verse too. How sweet the living water from the hills of God. It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Hallelujah. Yes, drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. A wonderful and my one more time, let's sing that chorus. Yes, drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. A wonderful and bountiful supply. Amen. Let's praise the Lord tonight. Let's lift up our hands and our voice unto him. Thank you, God, that you are refreshing, God, living water, God. Like when you're in a hot day, God, you just can't wait to have that water go down. Tastes so good, God, and you are so good, God. Have your way, Lord, tonight. 
We know, God, that you are ready to refresh, God, and ready to meet the need, God. You know what we have need of, God. Have your way, Lord, this evening, God. Oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the waters free, where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. A wonderful and bountiful supply. I thirsted, I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame. And nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came. Where springs of living water did abound. Amen. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. A wonderful and bountiful supply. Praise the Lord. Just we love you, we magnify you, we thank you for that fountain of living water made available through the blood of the Lamb, made available through the sacrifice of your life, made available to us forever and ever to drink from, flows from the very fountain of God, the very throne of God. Have your way tonight in this service. Accomplish your will. Father, meet with us in a very special way, God. God, let the Spirit of God be with us in this service tonight in a very special way and we'll give you all the glory and all the honor in the wonderful and glorious name of jesus go ahead and worship him tonight he's here right now he's here right now he's here right now to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory he's here right now to forgive our sin he's here right now to heal our hearts and heal our minds heal our bodies he's here tonight to meet our every need. Look, reach out to him tonight. Let him touch you tonight. You'll never be the same after he touches you. Let him touch you tonight. Jesus, we want the touch from heaven tonight. God, move in a mighty way. We'll give you all the glory and honor in the wonderful and glorious name, your name, Jesus. We thank you. We magnify you. Give the Lord a round of applause tonight. God is good. Amen. He inhabits the praises of his people tonight. He loves it when we love him tonight because he loves us. Jesus, we love you tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. God, thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have, God, to be in your presence. God, all we ask while we're here is that you simply have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, you may be seated. It is good to be in God's house. Been looking forward to this time all day today and is here. And, uh, and we'll be going home in a little bit and whatever else. We only get to spend about an hour or so uh, in God's house with one another. Uh, but uh, we might as well make the best of it while we're here. Amen. Amen. We'll get exactly from the Lord what we want from him tonight. And uh, if you come uh, uh, with your cup, Mm, not really ready to be lifted up. Well, uh, guess what? He, he probably isn't going to fill. But I come with my cup ready to be lifted up. I lift it up, and I'm saying, God, fill it up. Amen? Fill it up, and let God have his way tonight. I'd like to remind you of what's going on this weekend. But before we do, why don't we wait upon you for the Wednesday evening tithe and offering. All Christians should pay tithe, gladly and cheerfully give in the offering. Tonight's tithe and offering does go to meet the financial needs of the house and the work of the Lord here in Belleville. It is through your faithful giving, and we do appreciate your faithfulness to that. And uh, 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 we're able to do what we are able to do. And uh, we just got the uh, electric bill, and it was um, uh, uh, yeah, a little, a little, a little, you know. Uh, but no complaints, no complaints. And we're just letting people know that uh, there are expenses, and it is through uh, the faithfulness of God's people that we're able to. To meet those expenses and we thank God for you we thank God for your faithfulness and uh, it is our prayer that God will bless you through and for your giving amen brother Lockhart so would you please pray over the gift and the giver and ask the Lord's blessings tonight
immediately following the offering tonight, the sister's going to come and sing, and then we're going to come and minister to you that which we feel the Lord has laid upon our hearts to minister to you tonight. God bless you. Amen. We thank you for your giving tonight. At this time, our sister's going to sing. And while they're getting ready, let me just make uh, the announcements as to what is going to happen this weekend. Of course, there's going to be soul winning and there's going to be music practice. And uh, not real sure what is going on this weekend, Sister Berga. What is uh, happening this weekend? Sister Vasquez. Okay, Sister Vasquez. And uh, we are going to have a, a, for the soul winning at 12, uh, we're going to uh, just do like we did last week. We're going to talk a little bit, but at 12 o'clock, there will be a soul winning uh, meeting, and then we'll go out and uh, uh, we'll um, uh, go out and invite people to church after that, all right? So starting at 11, uh, music practice, and then 12, soul winning, and then I thought about this. Maybe we'll just uh, say this on Saturday, all right? Um, uh, we might flip things around, but um, uh, that's what's going on. Then, of course, Bible study Saturday night. At this time, our sister is going to sing, and then we'll come and preach to you that which we feel the Lord has laid upon our heart. God bless you, ladies. It's not conservative or liberal, however they're defined. It's not about interpretation or the judgments of the mind. It's the opposite of politics, of power or prestige. It's about a simple message. And whether we believe it's still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin. And it sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. We can water down theology, preach a word to suit our needs. And we can justify sweet subtle lies that are wrapped in noble deeds. We can alter our convictions to adapt to social whims. But we cannot change the gospel or the truth contained within. It's still the cross. It's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin. Oh, and it set this captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. It's still the cross. Oh, it's still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin. And it 
sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still the cross. Amen. Again, Saturday at 11 for Sister Vasquez, and then 12 o'clock for the soul winning meeting, 7.30 for the Bible study. I want to read out of the Psalms tonight, Psalm chapter 90, or the 90th Psalm. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the works of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. And with the help of the Lord tonight, we want to speak to you on the title, Human Frailty, an Incentive, an incentive to Seek the Divine Blessing, or What's Missing. What's Missing. Reverend Berger, so would you please stand and pray over the message and the messenger tonight. Amen. In our Bible uh, setting, in the verses that we selected to read to you, the psalmist, who really is Moses, Moses is the author of this psalm, passed from meditation to a different stage. He passed from meditation to supplication. In verses 1 through 11, Moses is in serious contemplation. He's thinking. He's meditating on God. You know, that's a good thing to do. Sometimes we, we get our life all filled with life and the world and circumstances and situations that we find ourselves in. And instead of seeing God, we see them. And that's, you know, we're not saying that in an upbraiding way. Just that's how it happens. That's how it goes. But here, he is thinking about God had been thinking about God, now he moves in to a different uh, form of thinking because, you know, you can't help but to begin to supplicate God. Once you begin to think about him, you can't uh, help but to move into the next stage of thinking about him, and that is seeking him for needs that you have. Let me read to you verses 1 through 11 real quickly. Again, he was in serious contemplation as he thinks about God and all that he is. The Bible says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, you children of men. In other words, what he's saying there is, God lets man destroy himself. God just takes his hand off of man and lets man destroy himself for one reason. For one reason. It's in that destruction that man finally opens up his eyes and realizes, realizes that the answer, if, if there is an answer, and there is an answer, 
There's an answer for all of the maladies in the world that's going on in the world today. There's an answer for all the sorrow and all the grief, all the anguish of heart. And that is a returning to God, a getting back to God. And that's what he says here. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, return ye children of men. And, and really, when, does, when do the children of men return to God? The answer to that question is, when they want to, when they want to, when they get tired of uh, their failure, when they get tired of their sin or the effects of their sin, when they get tired and they finally get fed up, fed up with what? And that really is what this psalm is about, so let's just go on. For a thousand years, he said, in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass, which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger. Again, the man of God is thinking about God. We are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And really, really, when you look at this, when you look at this, at this time, at this time, men stop living to be uh, the age of Abraham and before. You know what I'm saying? Here... 80 years at best, you know what I'm saying? All right, but let's go on. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Having meditated upon the eternity of God, and the transientness and misery of man's life upon earth, and having traced man's suffering to his sins, here Moses now proceeds to implore the blessings of the eternal and unchangeable God upon his fail, uh, a frail uh, creature, man. The psalmist asked God for, number one, help in forming a correct estimate of life. You know, as we were preparing for the message tonight, uh, I thought about what's missing. And I think what's missing in a lot of people uh, is uh, a correct estimate of life. Let me just uh, go on and, and we'll see if I can explain what I mean there. He said, here he asked, he's asking God to teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. It would have been reasonable for Moses to have concluded his meditation on the eternality of God, that since man's life is so short and sad, man would form a true estimate of himself. Because life is full of sorrow and short, Moses could have concluded that man man would form a right estimate of his life himself, but he doesn't. Man doesn't do that. All men count all men mortal but themselves. We think we're going to live forever. You know, nothing, uh, you know, especially if you're young, man, you know, young, you're going to defy everything. You're going to defy the gun. You're going to defy the knife. You're going to defy the bomb. You're going to defy the car crash. Nothing is going to destroy you. We think that we are immortal. But that's not a good or correct estimate of our life. We are frail individuals. We are nothing without God. We're nothing without God. If we have 70 years, what is that in the light of eternity? What is that in the light of a 1,000 years or a 100 years, it, it's not much, right? All men count all men mortal but themselves. Though life is so uncertain, yet each man acts 
as though he had a long earthly future before him. But the truth of the matter is, none of us know how long a future we have, isn't it? Now, this is not a, a downer message. It really is a message that, that's directed to help us have the right perspective of our life. Because, you know, I was talking, who was I talking? Brother Lockhart, I don't know if it was you. Uh, we were talking about uh, um, uh, swimming or how we used to uh, uh, swim in the ocean and until I saw the movie Jaws, all right? Then I wouldn't go back and, you know, or whatever. But re what really happened was I joined the military. And the military, what the military does is it causes you to think. In, in, in Panama, where I was stationed, there was a lot of water. And so they taught us water safety. What does that mean? How to survive in water. They taught us to take it serious because water, and I, I remember one time, and I was, uh, I was, I was, I was going uh, to, I volunteered to, to join the Rangers, and so they, uh, they had so many people that they could take out of each company, and, uh, and I was, uh, I, I, I volunteered, but they only had so many slots, and because I was only an E3, they didn't want me to go, all right, but one of the, one of the, the training uh, things that they had us do, one of the training uh, exercises that they had us do was to jump in the pool with all of our equipment on, except for our rucks, so we had all our LB ear gear on and, and everything, and he taught he said, now, when you jump in the pool, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go in like this. We have our rifle up here, our weapon up here. And then as we go into the water, we're supposed to bring it down, which means that when you do that, which, uh, it will stop your downward descent, and it will bring you back up. Well, I forgot to do that. I forgot to bring my weapon back down. I forgot to bring it down, and I just kept sinking. And I, and I saw the instructor, man. He was getting ready to jump in after me. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm looking up and I'm saying, man, what am I doing wrong? Because I'm sinking. I'm not supposed to be sinking. Then I realized, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to bring my weapon down. And so when I did, I instantly came back up. You know, but, but what they were doing was they were teaching us how to respect these natural elements. And so swimming in the ocean... Uh, you know, you, you, uh, when I was young, I had no fear. But after all that, man, you, you know, you look at things a little differently. You look at, man, that can take my life in a heartbeat. That, that can, can hurt me real bad. You know what I'm saying? Is that, that's three, right? You know what I'm saying? All right. And so as a young individual, we think that we have a long, bright future ahead of us. But none of us are guaranteed that. None of us are guaranteed. There was a power outage in the area last night, correct? I got a notification at the home. I said, I wonder what happened. I wonder what happened. And was it an accident? And my mind went, did somebody take out a light pole? And, and you know, sometimes that could be a fatal accident. Did somebody die? I don't know. What I'm trying to simply uh, show is that none of us know what tomorrow holds for us for us. And so a correct estimate of life, if it is to be correct, must include two things. Number one, it must include the idea that it is brief. Our life is brief. If we're going to do anything with our life, it has to be right now. Now is the time. If you're going to change uh, the way you live, you can't wait. You can't, the longer you put it off, the harder it gets. You want to change your diet. You want to change your physical appearance. You want to change uh, maybe your health situation. If you're going to do it, you need to do it right now. You say, well, I'll do it when I get all my P's and Q's put together. You may never, ever get them put together. Part of doing it now means you're putting it together even right now. Right now, you're putting it together. We must, if our estimate of life is going to be correct, it must include the thought that it is brief. 
This the psalmist did. He understood that life is brief. He said, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether what? Vanity. Even at our best state in this body, even in our uh, best state in this body, we are what? Vanity. Because now we may have big muscles. We may have, you know, this, but man, you're not, you're not bigger than that steel beam. You're not more powerful than the locomotive, you know, like Superman was. You're not able to bound uh, 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 tall buildings in a single bound. You can't stop a locomotive, all right? Yeah, you may think you can. You can stop it with your teeth, you know what I'm saying, as they show you there on YouTube. I wonder, I wonder you know, really, I don't think so, all right? That's all doctored. Man, those teeth have come right out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know? All right, and it's, it's fun. It's fun, though. It's fun. You know, it's fun thinking that I can do this and I can do that. I was watching, I was watching a man lift, lift some weights, and he got it up. But, man, it was, it's not the up part that's the hard part. It's the down part. That's why they have people catching those weights. Well, they didn't catch them soon enough, and that bar, that bar came across his throat. Now, he was glad to have somebody there. But what happened was he only had one. And when that one fella lifted up, it, 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 just, it just wasn't a good experience for, for both of them because the weights went off on one side, then the weights came off on the other side, and, and, and whatever. Now both of them survived, all right? All I'm saying is that we're not as big and bad as we think we are, right? We're frail. At our best state, we are altogether vanity. Your life on earth is not only brief, but it is preparatory. You're getting ready for something. The world is a great school, and your life in it is educational. In it, you are to prepare characters. You're to, you're to prepare, uh, we are to prepare ourselves, and we are to prepare each other for eternity. But primarily, but not exclusively, we are to prepare ourselves. And we do that each and every day we live our life. We prepare our eternal life the way we live each and every day of our life. The question is, is how are we preparing? Are we preparing to be a success in eternity or are we preparing to be a failure in eternity? Successful meaning we get to see God face to face. Unsuccessful means we have to hear him say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. We are preparing for that day. Each and every day we live our life, we are preparing for that day. And sadly, and hopefully not so sadly, others are preparing as they watch our life. As they watch our life, they are preparing too. The seriousness in which we serve the Lord or the lack of seriousness, seriousness in which we serve the Lord. We are showing others. We are helping them prepare themselves for eternity. And so... If we're going to have a correct estimate of our life, we must have these two things. The idea that it is brief and the idea that it is preparatory. We are preparing for eternal life somewhere. We are heading somewhere in eternity. Now, I know that flies in the face of the, the teaching that's out there in the world and and that's what's missing out there. The, the thing that's missing out there is the reality of God, the truth of God. They've turned the truth into what? A lie. But that doesn't change anything. And we're going to, uh, well, perhaps we'll prove it here, but let's go on. With the passing of each day, you are either more or less prepared for eternity. You are either more 
or you're less prepared. More meaning, man, I'm one day seeing, I'm one day closer to seeing Jesus face to face and hearing him say, well done. And man, that is what? That is making me excited about today. Or we are less prepared, meaning <laughs> I'm not ready to go. I hope he doesn't come today. Because if he comes today, then, then uh, I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And so when you think about that, you will more, you will you will be more readily willing to apply your heart unto wisdom. When you begin to think, man, my life is brief. And not only is my life brief, but I'm preparing for my eternal life right now. You will be more inclined to seek God, to seek him as a psalmist said and say, God, teach me to number my days. <laughs> God, help me to understand the things that I need to understand because, man, the last thing I want to do is miss out on my, uh, the opportunity of me getting to heaven. The last thing I want to do is, is miss out on my, on my retirement plan that God has for them that work for him. You know what I'm saying? Not only did the psalmist ask God, or asked from God help in forming a correct estimate of life. He also asked God for the mercy of God in life. He asked God for God's mercy. He said, return, O Lord, how long? God, how long oh, do we have to suffer? How long do we have to go through this hard a nest that we are going through. How long, God, is your wrath going to be against us? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. Not later on in life, but God, right now, satisfy me with your mercy. God, what I need more than anything else is I need your mercy. God, I need your mercy. And God said, if you want mercy, you got to show yourself merciful, right? He said, oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days from this day forward. From today, from right now, God, satisfy us with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days from this day forward. He prayed that God would exercise his mercy towards them. The Israelites in the wilderness were visited with some severe expressions of the wrath of God by reason of their sin. The rebellion. The refusal to believe God. The refusal to take God at his word. You know, there's a lot of people who have a problem with taking God at his word. But God's not a man that he should lie. And God is not going to excuse your sin. The sin of unbelief is what? That's the mother of all sins. Because people don't believe, they do all manner of things. Right? Right? When a man doesn't believe he's going to go to hell, there's, there's no restraint. There's no restraint. There's no fear of God. There's no fear of judgment. But God said what? Hell is our default destination. We don't stumble into heaven. God doesn't pick who goes to heaven. You do. You do. And you do it by what? Taking God at his word. It's a whosoever will gospel. God said, whosoever cometh unto me, he said he will in no wise cast out. The Jews, because of their sin, had been visited with some severe expressions of the wrath of God. Their long and mournful and apparently fruitless wandering in the wilderness. <clears throat> 
was a punishment from God because of the refusal to believe him. For a long time they had been bearing the heavy judgments of God. So they cried unto him, how long? God, how long? And the answer to that question is found not in God. The answer to that question is found in us. It's when they ask that question, right? Because now, now they're, they're getting tired of it. Now they're, 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 they're going to say, God, whatever, whatever we got to do to stop this from going on, man, we're ready to do it. Just tell us what we got to do. Just tell us what we got to do. Humble myself? No problem. I'm humbled. <laughs> I don't want to spend not one more day with the frogs. I don't want to spend not one more minute with the flies. I don't want to spend not one more minute uh, with, uh, with, with the blood-filled water. You know what I'm saying? If the, Pharaoh, if the Pharaoh of Egypt would have just humbled himself, his nation would have been spared. But because of his refusal, just like the refusal of the children of Israel, for 40 years they wandered. And the only ones that came out of that generation were who? Joshua and Caleb. All the other men of that generation died in the wilderness. Not because God was unmerciful, but because they, they refused to call out to God. It was the next generation. It was the generation of young men that was being, that was, that was being raised up. They were the ones that were crying out to God. Because of 40 years, because of what mom and dad did, 40 years they suffered. Parents, it does matter how you live your life in front of your children. It does matter. It does matter. When you're tempted to, to go astray from God, the, the, the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is just find a place and lay prostrate on the ground and say, God, be merciful unto me. Because, God, I, I need your mercy right now. Because, God, I, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything that will hurt my son or my daughter. My sons or my daughter, God, I want to be faithful. I want to help not only prepare myself for eternity, but I want to help prepare them for eternity the right way. I'm just about done. For a long time they had been bearing the heavy judgments of God. So they cried unto him, how long? It is not God that changes, but it is man. It's man that changes. It took them a long time to get to the place where they would ask God to be merciful. And God is merciful to you when you let him be. And the question that as we begin to move this thing into the closing, the question, one question here tonight that I want to ask is, will you let him be merciful to you tonight? Will you ask him for his mercy? God, be merciful to me. God, help me to see my life correctly. You know, if you're going to see your life correctly, you're going to need God's mercy. The reason why you're going to need God's mercy is because God's mercy is proof that God is real. The one thing that's missing in the lives of many is the reality of God. The reality of God. They know about God, but they have no reality in him. It's not enough to know about him. You must know him. And when you know him, you will love him. And when you love him, you will serve him. You will serve him. And you'll do it the Bible way. The man will do it the Bible way. The woman will do it the Bible way. Because that's what Christians do. We serve God. And we serve God how God tells us to serve it. If, 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 if the... If, if, the, if the, the husband is the head of the house, then he's the head of the house, not the woman, all right? Because that's God's way. I know that that man that just, in, in America today, you know, uh, that sounds like male chauvinism there. 
but I'm not. I'm not. God's way is, you know, the leader, the, the head, the leader. I don't expect my wife to get out there in, in the 90-something degree heat and humidity. You know, she helped me today. She was a real blessing with me today. But, you know, when she go walking, I go, I go walking right by her, you know. By the, time I, you know, by the time she got to where I've been there twice already, you know what I'm saying? I don't expect her to do all that I do. There's no way. I should bear the brunt of the work, not her. But see, in modern-day America, we have some sorry men, don't we? They'll send their wives out there to work. And they'll stay home and play YouTube all day long. Play uh, something of the galaxy. What is that? Warriors of the galaxy or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> you know. And then complain when the dinner's not ready. She's been on a job 10 hours. You slept. You sat down on that sorry seat for eight hours. The only reason why you got up was to go to another sorry seat where you spent another 20 minutes playing a game called a bathroom. <laughs> Who's that directed at? The sorry men. And you want to be respected as a man. Well, when you grow up, and you become worthy of respect, maybe you might be respected as a man. How about that? That's easy for me, man. I'm, I'm big and bad behind the pulpit. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I feel. Respect is not something that you, that you automatically gain, although I will respect you as a human being. But if you expect me to respect you, uh, you know, doing nothing... It's hard to respect somebody that, that doesn't want to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is working. They're over there playing. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. All right. And you want me to respect you? You want me to treat you like a man? Well, get up and, and, and do something worthy of being treated like a man. Go to work. Work hard. Don't rob from your employer. Anyways, that's not part of the message. <laughs> All right. Which brings me to my last point. Not only did Moses, the man of God, ask God to help him form the correct estimate of life and for God's mercy, he asked God to manifest his power and grace in his life. God, manifest, make known your power and grace in my life. But God, not only in my life, in the life of your people, in the life of your people. He said, let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands Establish thou it. God, the works of our hands, establish it. Let it be meaningful. Let it be purposeful. Let it be fruitful. In other words, God, don't let me waste my life with these things right here. With these things right here. God, don't let me waste my life. Don't let me deceive myself that I'm doing something when I'm not doing anything with these things. Don't let me deceive myself, God. He said, the works of our hands, establish thou it. God, let us see some fruit for the work that we're doing. This is what is missing so often in our world today. People who want God to manifest his power and grace, not only in their life, but in the life of our fellow men. Our fellow man, not our fellow men, but our fellow man. Where are the people who want to see God manifest himself, his power and his grace, his power and his love, his mercy and his grace? 
Man, think about, think about the nation full of men and women like that. Tammy, there wouldn't be any more. What happened the other day? She didn't just curse her out. She slammed you too for doing something that God wants you to do. You know what I'm saying? And then she cursed me out. But in all of that, I hope I see her again. I'd love to help her if I can. Now, I can't do it by myself. I'm not going to, you know. All right, but just because somebody, somebody has a problem doesn't mean that they're just to be cast away. That man out there possessed of a legion of demons, he had a serious problem, cast away by society out there in the graveyard. But one man by the name of Jesus, one man by the name of Jesus went out and changed that person's life. And that's really the work that God has us here to do too. He has us here to change the lives, the hearts and lives of men and women. It is what is needed on the individual level. God, make yourself known to me. Make your power and grace known to me. And it is what is needed on the national level. God, make yourself, your power and your grace known to our people. My question in closing as I come to the musical instruments. All right. My question to you in closing is this. Will you ask of God his divine blessings upon your life? God, will you bless me? And some people are afraid to, to ask those questions of God because they're not sure if they want to be beholden to God. In other words, if God blesses me, then I'm going to have to do something for him in return. And so they hold back. And every day they hold back, they miss out. They miss out on the blessings of God. They miss out on the very thing that can satisfy their life and cause their life to be fulfilled, fulfilling, to be happy, to be joyful, and uh, to be completely and entirely satisfying. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with just the cottage below. Why? But I know up there, I've got something far better. Up there, i got a mansion. And it doesn't matter how big my cottage is down here, it's still just a cottage. It can burn up just like that. My question to you in closing is, will you ask of God his divine blessings upon your life? Your life? If not, why not? Don't you or won't you understand that that is the missing part? That is the missing part. What's missing in my life? What's missing on the, on the streets of, of Belleville? What's missing on the streets of America? The power and the grace of God is missing. That's what's missing. And that's why we're here tonight. We're here to take it to the world. Amen. We're here to share the power. And, and how do we do it? We do it by first praying, God, manifest your power and your grace. Manifest it tonight. And it may seem like nobody, nobody cares, nobody's listening, but there are people who are tired of their sin. God will lead you. God will guide you. As we begin to find a place to pray, the altar is now open. Let God have his way in your heart tonight. Will you seek him tonight? Will you seek him tonight for his divine blessings upon your life? They're yours for the asking. All you have to do is simply ask. Will you let him have his way tonight? God bless you tonight. More than success. If I must choose to own one thing, 
For above all else, I must be saved. For above all else, I must be saved. For what? For eternity, for above all else, I must be saved. Even though the souls of those that I love seem all so dear, more than the souls of others, I must make my own salvation sure. For if I to others show the way, and then I become just a cast away. This price I can not afford to pay. My soul is worth it all. For above all else, I must be saved. For above all else, I must be saved. For whatever you have to do to me, don't let me be lost for eternity. For above all else, I must be saved. More than security, more than success. If I must choose to own one thing, I'll take Jesus over the rest. For if I should attain the goal to gain the world and I lose my soul, lose my soul then I have lost it all for above all else I must be saved for above all else 
for eternity for above all else I must be praised so true I mean pray as long as you like and if you're praying you may consider yourself just missed. remember soul winning uh, Saturday morning uh, uh, band practice Saturday morning and of course we're going to be speaking uh, a little bit looking back over the last six months seeing what we could do better uh, in the soul winning uh, in uh, the other departments also uh, appreciate brother uh, Hughes he's been coming a little bit earlier we went over the PA system today we got a, a little bit more acquainted with it and um, it's going to take time but we're working it through appreciate of course the planning department my wife and I were over there today uh, Again, renewing the vision, renewing the vision, and uh, and so uh, that's going to move forward. Um, and of course, there are things that we could do better. Always better. Self improvement is always a good thing, and uh, we learn from our mistakes and we drive on. Right? We drive on. We climb higher. And uh, one of these days, we will become an effective, efficient, well organized army for the Lord. Amen. And that's what we want to be. So, all right, Saturday, uh, all these things are going to take place. Again, band practice starts at 11. So when he starts at 12, we won't uh, keep you here long. Try to get you out of here by 1230 to get out there and uh, invite people to church. All right. If you'd like to be a part of that, please feel free to do so. Um, the band is uh, right now, it's just one person singing and that will be uh, Sister Vasquez this weekend. Uh, we are looking forward to putting together the uh, worship team. And that will be uh, something that we're going to work on in this, the latter part of this year, okay? The latter part of the, the, in other words, these final six months of the year. Hopefully soon we'll get it put together, all right? But until then, we'll just keep on doing what we're doing and uh, keep building bigger and better, getting it done in 21, right? All right. It's been good to be in God's house. Reverend Lister, would you please pray? Stand pray. Dismiss us in prayer. Once he's through praying, you may consider yourself dismissed. God bless you tonight. Go in the love of God. Let the love of God go with you.